I just got off of work and I decided to shoot a video really quick, currently in my internal medicine rotation. Today is about the pros and cons going to a Caribbean medical school, whether that's SGU, Ross, AUC, CBC, EFG, you know, whatever, it doesn't matter. <laughs> pros and cons of going to a Caribbean medical school. I can only speak from my personal experience. I don't like to waste any time, so we'll start right now. Pro number one, you don't waste time. You get to start right away. I didn't have to retake the MCAT, thank God, <laughs> and I hated that test so much. And I didn't have to reapply and hopefully be lucky enough to get invited for an interview. That was really important for me. It felt like I would have wasted another year and a half of my life just waiting to see if I'm even good enough to get into an American medical school. So I cut the cord, applied to SGU. The whole application process was really easy actually. Brings me to another pro. Easy application process and easy interview. The whole process in general was quick. If you're considering it, maybe just apply to see if you'd even get accepted. Deciding on whether or not to go to a Caribbean medical school in the first place is a little bit harder, but if you actually have a choice in front of you and an option in front of you that could maybe change your mind but with that being said as always don't go overseas until you have completely exhausted all of your options that means american medical schools and dl schools and if you still feel confident about going into medicine and certain that you want to do this as a career then go ahead and you know give yourself a shot another pro you're going to be completely away from your friends and family there's nothing better than being able to focus 100 percent on your craft there's something about when you go you know overseas everybody just kind of leaves you alone because they know you're trying to do big things and they'll give you the space to to work it out that was great there was no distraction you know there were no birthdays i had to get to no 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 obligations other than studying basically and that was priceless for me another pro you're completely surrounded by medical students. There's nothing more motivating than being surrounded by others who are doing the same exact thing as you and thinking the same things that you're thinking. Just trying to make it through your classes, make it through your exams, and make it through the semester or year. Being away from your family and being surrounded by other medical students and a larger number of medical students, I think those are two things that work really well together into helping you kind of get in that mindset of do or die. I have a big investment on my future and on myself, so let me go and give it all I got. I really appreciated that. Another pro is that you're gonna meet some really amazing people. No matter what medical school you go to anyway, these are gonna be some of the hardest times of your life. I guarantee you, you're gonna make a lifelong friend, if not multiple lifelong friends, that you're, you're gonna keep close for a long time, lifelong, so yeah. And some days, you're really gonna lean on them. You're really gonna look towards them for support just to help you get along this difficult time in life, challenging and difficult time in life. Another pro, island life. I don't know if you like that. Oh, that actually, I didn't even, I just like, I'm from Hawaii, so that's why I love that thing. I like to think it's a coconut tree, not a palm tree. Anyway, whatever. Weather is usually always around 85 degrees, depending on what island you're on. It can rain sometimes, uh, it is humid. I kind of, I grew up in that weather anyway, so I, I really like that weather. Great views. You're gonna be studying 90% of the time anyway, so it's, the views don't really matter, but when you're on edge and you're about to lose it, it could help to step away and be able to look at some of the most scenic views you've ever seen. Okay, now on the dark side. Let's start off with the most important thing. There's a certain stigma that comes along with being a Caribbean student or being an IMG. I feel that for a majority of your medical school career, that stigma is mostly self-made. I've never been mistreated by other students, other attendings, other residents, or hospital staff just because I went to a foreign medical school. I've been getting a few questions about that. No, I've never experienced any type of malice towards me for where I came from. At the end of the day, as soon as you get a residency position, you guys are all equal. Uh, not, none of that matters anymore. Nobody's gonna ask you where you came from. As for the stigma, I think a lot of that is in our heads, but I mean, obviously, this is where the important part comes in when you're trying to apply uh, to residency positions. They always say that when residency programs have, for example, two students who are completely matched they both hit, say, a 230 on their step one score, and they both have equal credentials and whatnot. One is from a U.S. medical school, the other is from a Caribbean medical school. 99% of the time, they're gonna go with that U.S. American student, and that's totally understandable. In other words, what that means is that we have to work a little bit harder, actually a lot harder. We have to work harder. In order for us to score a little bit higher, we have to be a little more diverse in what we practice and what type of extracurriculars or what type of accomplishments that we have on our CV. We could just be a more robust and complex student and make that choice a little bit easier for a residency program to accept you over another medical student. I guess if you're going to a Caribbean medical school and you accept your invitation to join, you're basically stating that you're okay with having to work harder than your equal counterpart. If you're okay with that, then I think 
you'll be okay in the end. Another con, it's very far away. It's not just another state you're going to, going to a whole nother country. That means your flights are way more expensive, travel time is a lot longer, availability is a lot less. I guess maybe my flights, I was paying around anywhere from like 11 to $1,300 uh, round trip. And my flights were like anywhere from 13 to 18 hours. I think, with layovers included, so. Yeah, it's kinda tough, but it's just another thing. <laughs> it's just another thing you have to deal with. Another con, large class sizes. So before, I kinda liked the fact that the class sizes were a little bit larger because it kinda felt like, hey, this is a big community. I don't know why I get energized when I see other people and I'm like, yeah, this is cool. But yeah, I think I would go kinda crazy if I saw the same 80 people a day, you know, for, four years or something like that. Yeah, but the class sizes are huge and that can be super intimidating. I remember my first day actually, I was just so shocked of how many people were inside the classroom. As long as you're trying hard and you're doing your best, don't be phased by those, you know, thousand other students, so. And I guess resources are spread thin with that, so yeah. Large class sizes. Con. And with those large class sizes, I think it, there comes a lot of different personalities and I think some people can really, and I'm not putting anybody down, but I think some people have a tendency to try and overcompensate and that's where you could run into situations of, you know, meeting other people who are gunners or meeting people who are just negative and I don't, I don't know. I get a good sense of what people are about like within the first five, 10 minutes of meeting them and I tend to stay away from those people. I think that's where the the concept of it being really cutthroat it also stems from. You know, people will, will always try to get ahead, but the people I was surrounded by, they were people that I know 100% they would put me before their own needs just to make sure I'm doing I'm doing well and we're, we're all doing well as a team. But I think it's more about the people you pick to be around you because like they always say, people you choose to surround yourself with says a lot about who you are as a person. That's completely true. If you could hit a C average or above, you're gonna be doing great. Anything above that, you're just gonna be doing better. So yeah, I think you won't be hit with those those experiences too hard if, if you are, are just surrounding yourself by good people, good habits, and working as hard as possible to score as high as you can. And just always be pushing yourself. Never be, never be, complacent with how you're doing and how you're performing. Always try to be better. Another thing, Caribbean med schools are expensive. Let me check the average of how much they cost. A US MD public school program would cost around $166,000 and a Caribbean med school could be anywhere from $185 to $264,000. Right now I'm in, I'm about to start my fourth year and I know I'm already over $300,000 in debt, so. Yeah, dope. Another crappy thing, the mosquitoes, that sucks. Another thing, when I was going to Caribbean medical school, the general rule was two strikes and you're out basically, meaning you go through a term, you fail that term, you get to try again for free, but if you fail that again, then they have the right to excuse you from their university. So that was the rule when I was going in, but things have changed, especially towards like my fourth and fifth term there. I would start hearing things about changing their rules about how many times you could repeat a term. Make sure you do the research on that. I, I've heard that now you could repeat a term multiple times. Make sure you vet that information yourself. I'm busy, I do not have the time to do that right now. And I kind of forgot, so my bad. And lastly, there was a video made by Kevin Jabal, MD. Uh, he makes the M Med School Insiders videos. Seems like a really great guy. I watched his video recently about, it was titled something like, My Personal Opinion About SGU. And I think he really did a good job of vetting all the information, challenging things that other people just take at face value. I think that mentality is, crucial for any person who's willing to spend you know up to half a million dollars on themselves and they're you know furthering their education I was really grateful for the points that he brought up he even had me thinking on a higher level now well, it would have probably kind of freaked me out a little bit but at the end of the day I knew what my choice was in my head and I don't think it would have changed my mind don't think it would have changed a thing but I appreciate what he did for sure. I think the answer was simple enough for me because I had a few pillars of thought in my head. I knew I wanted to go to medical school, I knew I wanted to become a doctor, and I knew I wanted to become a psychiatrist. And another thing, I knew that my chances of getting into a US medical school slim to none. As sad as it is to say, these medical schools have high standards for a good reason. They want the best of the best to do one of the most important jobs in the world. And that is totally fair. I knew that I had no other option, so that's why 
it was really easy for me to make the choice. And no, I did not consider any other Caribbean medical school in my decision making. I'm going to invest this much on myself. I'm betting on myself and I know I'm gonna work my butt off. Let me get into medical school. Open that door for me, watch what I could do. I said it before in my other videos, SGU, the right choice for you. You can watch it right up above. But I basically said the same thing. I was willing to bet a whole lot of money on myself in order to make it all the way through. I will make another video on how I feel about step one becoming pass fail and how do I think that would affect us Caribbean medical students. Stay tuned for that, I'll post it up right here. When, right there. There. All of my anxieties and worries about failing and going to a Caribbean medical school and what if I don't get residency positions, it basically left my brain within my first week of medical school because it was such a fast pace and it was such a demanding position to be in that I forgot about all of that stuff. It was damn good for me because there wasn't enough time to think about, oh my God, what if this goes wrong? What if this goes wrong? A million things could go wrong, but if that one thing that could go right is worth it for you, then go ahead and go for it.